Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. This is the Qualsys webinar. We are going to go ahead and start things up. Um, very excited to have you guys all today. Um, there is a lot that we want to talk about, a lot, a lot. Um, before we begin, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you uh, are joining one of our webinars for the first time, uh, you'll notice that the go to webinar control panel. Um, on your screen allows you to text and, and type in. That's how you'll interact with us. We don't want these webinars to be something where we're just up here talking and you don't get to participate. This should absolutely be something that you participate in as well. Um, so if you'll find that go to webinar control panel you use to log in today, find the section called chat or questions, you'll be able to type something into us there. Uh, Whitney's here watching those things popping in. Oh, look, we already got Stefan. Dude, I love hey. Stefan. We were just talking about we him. We were just right? talking about him. I, t I can't. Sounds I can't post him. <laughs> it, it was all good. We were just. We were just talking about how um, every time we post anything on social media, anything we you know post on LinkedIn, uh, things like that, that he's part of it, and he's always on all the webinars. So. Yeah, and his birthday is tomorrow. Happy so birthday happy. Tomorrow. Let's sing. Happy <laughs> birthday to <laughs> you. Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, Stefan. Happy birthday to you. And many more. And many more. I ran out the door. Wait, what are you saying? I don't know. You're doing something different. Anyway, happy birthday, Stefan. Thanks for everything you do. We love having you on our webinars. Love having you on social media. Hey, it's Michael Mann's birthday tomorrow, too. It is? Oh, that's what he said. Mike? Oh, man. Dude, we got all sorts of birthdays. I don't think we should sing again, though. No. We got too many people asking too many things, and we want to dive right into the content today. So, again, <laughs> we're recording this session. It will be on our dealer portal. It will also be on the on our YouTube page. You can go to um, youtube.com slash Qualsys. He's requesting a song. He's requesting a song. <laughs> he, he she did a ghost show already. Got it. He said, got to sing. All right. Go, <laughs> That's all I got. So, uh, That's all I got. Wow. <laughs> You're welcome. Wow. And she's gone. Anyway. Um, so... Type in your questions, type in your comments. We're already seeing things in here, so we're, we're very excited to have everyone on today. A lot of people on. Um, before we start diving into um, our content today, I want to know a poll question. Have you installed the IQ Panel 2 for an end user? Yes or not yet? Notice there's not an option of no because we don't take no for an answer here at Corsus. So <laughs> please <true. laughs> pop in there. Let's see. You know, I want to know, have you already doing it? The reason we ask this question is because we want to know what is the what is the, the pulse basically of the people that were here uh, uh, that are on our webinar today. Are there people that are, you know, brand new to Qualsys and brand new to the IQ panel too? Or are you uh, are you a veteran and you're looking for you know ways to improve what you're doing and things like that? And it looks like According to the poll results, and, and most people have voted already, that 75% of the people have not installed the IQ Panel 2. That's excellent. So the, this is going to be really exciting for you guys. I think you're going to really enjoy what we're going to learn today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close that poll up, and uh, we've got another poll that we'll do here at the end. Um, but before we jump into anything else, are there any questions come up or any comments that we need to address before we dive into today's, today's presentation. Mike's a little disappointed that we didn't sing the whole song. Mike is, <laughs> yeah, I can see why that would be disappointing. More birthdays coming up this week. Happy birthday, everyone. Oh, yes. wow. I didn't realize that <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's my birth... dad's birthday. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're I keep not singing to your dad. We are not singing to your dad. I'm sorry. That's just not what we're doing That's today. why I got so excited because okay. I can't forget. <laughs> yeah, you cannot forget. Okay, so everyone. We're going to jump into this presentation. Today's topic is how to sell and uh, market the IQ Panel 2. And when we talk about this, I want to give you a little bit of background information first. So first off, we talk about Moore's Law. Are you familiar with Moore's Law, Kelsey? Have you heard a, of it before? A little bit, yeah. But so explain it to me again. Basically, Moore's Law is this concept that transistors and, and things are going to get smaller and faster over time. And in fact, Moore, I think it was Gordon Moore was his name, um, back in the 60s, said uh, that they're going to get twice as fast and half the size every single year. And the crazy thing is it actually sort of became true. And so the tech industry has kind of adopted this principle of we're always going to get better, we're always going to get faster, and it's really been the case for almost everything. You think about your phone, you think about your, you know, your tablets, everything. Every time there's a new one that comes out, it's always better than the last one. It's always faster. But that hasn't really been the case in the security industry. I remember the first security panel I had was a large piece of plastic about this big. I will not say the name of the company, but it was about this big and about that thick on my wall. 
they still sell that same item. <laughs> they still sell that same panel. And not only that, they have not changed the plastic on that panel. And that was my first one. It was probably 10 years ago. So, you know, and it's, uh, maybe <laughs> I, should, I, I don't know, but I, I wonder if I still have it. It might my, still be in my garage. My, when my parents built their house 25 years ago, they got an alarm system. Mm -hmm. And it's just like that. And mm -hmm. they are still selling it today. Yep. And is my it parents still in their house? Yellow. No, we have oh, yeah, the them. Oh, yeah, it's exactly. in my dad's closet. But this whole concept of like, you know, connected devices everywhere and, and things, I mean, people are used to this kind of technology and I, I apologize if this isn't coming through as, as well as it could because I think uh, this is a big slide and through go to webinar sometimes it doesn't always pop in. But hopefully you get the idea that there's just all these great devices. Now, there's a lot of companies out there like Best Buy, Amazon and others who are really working hard to market this whole connected device ecosystem. Uh, I can't open up my email without an email from, you know, Amazon talking about Alexa, right. uh, Amazon Echo. Alexa, be quiet. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> We've got an Amazon Echo back here and every time she I every time I say day. something, Alexa, what's the weather going to be like today? Right now in Salt Lake City, it's 85 degrees with partly sunny skies. It today was hotter last week. Intermittent clouds. Alexa, stop. <laughs> Sadly, this feels like anyway, we've got a lot to say. <laughs> she does. She does. Um, but th those are cool little devices, mm -hmm. and they're trying to implement more, more and more. And and users are saying, "Hey, I want to do some of those cool things, and so I'm going to start buying things for my house to make it a smart house." Well, here's the problem, security dealers of, of the world: if they buy from Amazon, who are they not buying from? You. You. Okay. And potentially they're buying something that doesn't work with the entire system. Okay. So we really want to make sure you understand the importance, the real, real importance of you communicating everything you possibly do with your customers. I've seen time and time again dealers who say, well, I really want to focus on security instead. I really want to focus on you know, just those core things in my business. And yeah, I could do cameras if someone asks. Well, I could do smart lighting if they ask, but I'm not really going to do, that, do it most of the time. Because I'm, oh, are you guys goofing off in there? The technicians are making faces of us. You guys, you got to see this, hold on. So we're going to do something. This, this is another great thing about the IQ panel. So I think it's too loud when we're trying to do a webinar here. So I'm going to flip down and I'm going to just turn that volume down. Hey, Mark. Voila. Now if they decide to open those doors, it's not going to be nearly as loud. So go right ahead. Mark, how's it going, buddy? It's going good. Okay. Do you want to come say hi to everyone? He's going to sneak out the door. <laughs> to <laughs> say hi. This is Mark. Mark's one of our new Tams. He's been helping a bunch of you guys already, and I'm sure that you'll have a chance to meet him uh, in person at some point. So anyway, thanks, Mark. So connected devices. Again, you've got to start talking to your customers about all the things you can do because otherwise they're going to buy it somewhere else. Okay. Now, there's all these consumer forces out there with, with smartphones, and people will tell you, oh, well, smartphones are so important and things like that. The thing I want to make, uh, uh, the important point I want to make with smartphones is not that they are everywhere because we already know that. The point I want to make is that the smartphone technology that is currently being used should be in our security panel, panels, and that's what we've done with the IQ panel too, and we'll talk about that. But more than anything else, it establishes the consumer expectation. Okay? Do you have your phone? I don't. Do you have your phone? Do you? Oh, perfect. Okay. We carry it around. Almost everybody carries it around. Not as crazy. she's carrying it, <laughs> as she's carrying it, think of the experience she has. Okay. Anything that the customer is doing on this phone, they will assume is current technology because that's what they have. That's what they carry around. Anything that is unlike this will either be considered better because it's newer and cooler or will be considered lesser. Okay. So think about that for a second. The security panels that you're installing, thank you, Whitney. The security panels that you're installing right now, the security equipment that you're installing right now, if it doesn't look and feel like that, the customer is going to assume that it's older technology, right? And is older technology full price? No. No. Older technology is on sale, right? right? If you go to Best Buy and you see the old stuff, it's on sale, it's on clearance, or it maybe is only available online, okay? You can't expect to charge full price for a system if it still looks like old technology. So look and feel is really, really important, okay? There's also this trend with putting touch screens everywhere. 
Okay, I just got an Apple CarPlay stereo in my stereo. <gasps> Did you? It's awesome. I really like it. Having a touch screen in my car so I can interact with it is really cool. That's cool. Really, really cool. We touch screens are everywhere. They're they're on the walls. They're you know in your hands. They're on oh, wearables. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they're at the mall and in, in some sort of kiosk. Uh, or signage. I mean, they're showing up everywhere. So the trend is to put more touchscreens on things. And they've got to be beautiful touchscreens. They've got to be an experience that people are used to using and expect using, like the phone we were just talking about, right? Now, the industry up to this point has provided some great panels. The ones on the left here, those panels are the most, some of the most popular panels in the entire world. They have sold millions and millions of systems, okay? But they don't resemble the stuff we've just been talking about, do they? No. Now, there's companies out there like Vivint, <laughs> Xfinity, AT&T Digital Life, Smart Things, you know, the, from Samsung. They're trying to do their best to try and keep up with this and trying to do something new, but in many cases, they're still falling short. So where does that leave you as a security dealer trying to really make an impact in your community, in your, in your region, okay? Well, let's back up a bit. Remember, the first generation iPhone came out and said, hey, flip phones are dead. You don't want them anymore. You want to be able to do more with your phone. You want software updates. You want, you know, a camera in every device. You want all these cool things, okay? And we all agreed. We obviously agree because we all have them now, okay? The IQ Panel 1 did the same thing where we said, hey, there needs to be a camera in every system. It needs to be an appified, very easy to use experience. Seven inch touch screen, okay? It needs to have Wi-Fi and cellular dual path connectivity, okay? It needs to be smaller and, and thinner on the wall, okay? And while all of our competitors were working hard to try and match that technology, we were developing the IQ Panel 2, okay? And that IQ Panel 2 won the ESX Innovation Award last year um, at, the, uh, at the show and has just been a fantastic addition to our, our lineup. Now, we could talk a lot about all the different things that the IQ Panel 2 has. There's a lot of features on here. And you can see everything from a built-in glass break detector to uh, over there are software updates, Z-Wave Plus radio, dual path connectivity, all those things. There's a lot of stuff with this panel, but I want to limit it to five things for you, okay? Number one, so if you're not writing these down, get a pen. If you're on your phone, pull out your phone and pull up the notes app or whatever you use to make notes and make notes because you're going to want to write these down. You're going to want to refer to these over and over again. And remember, we're recording this, this so you'll probably want to watch through this a couple times and watch through it with your other sales teams, okay? So number one, looks matter. True or false? True. Do you guys agree? Totally. Do you guys agree that looks matter? If you got a really cool new phone, but it was really big, and it did lots of cool things, but it was really big and really clunky, would you use it? Okay. Do looks really matter to you? Okay. Whether it's on the wall or on a table stand, okay, the looks of this panel is beautiful. It's easy. It's intuitive. It's got this great screen that swipes and it interacts. Look how thin it is. Uh, if you have not had a chance to actually put your hands on one of these, go down to your local distributor and say, I want to touch the IQ panel too. If they don't have one on display, make them break open a box and pull it out. It is amazingly thin. It is amazingly intuitive. Okay. Think about the way that it interacts. Okay. It's swipes and touches. Okay. Very familiar. It feels like your phone. Okay, you want to go over to the lights, you swipe over there. You want to scroll up and down, use your finger to scroll up and down. You touch something, like the weather, and when you're done, you swipe it away. Okay, it's a very intuitive experience. Let me show you a couple things. For those of you, since many of you are new, I'm going to show you a couple things. Just show them like the weather, Kelsey. So I click the weather, and I got this big, beautiful weather forecast. Swipe it away when I'm done. Okay, pull up the panics in the bottom corner. Okay, emergency panic. Again, nice big descriptions. You can see, you know, hey, I touch here to trigger security panic. Maybe I did that by accident. Swipe it away. Okay, when you're done. So all of this experience, I want to get settings. Pull that settings tree down. Okay, you saw earlier how we changed the volume. Yeah, just adjust the volume a bit. Okay, so you up and down. If I want to check my cellular connection, press that cellular icon there. Okay, you can see, oh, that's what Verizon Wireless. We're getting two out of five bars. So a really easy experience. For the panel. Why are you guys smiling? Is there something going on here? Listen, we have communication happening. <laughs> Words are not needed. <laughs> oh my, what's going on? All right, you guys are up to something. I don't know. But the look and feel of the panel is really, really important. Are there any questions about look and feel that we should we should talk about? Everyone is 
completely agree that looks matter. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Well, we agree. So let's go into, oh, the, one other point we want to make is that looks are not just the feel of the plastic. It's also that user experience. And that means not just the user experience on the panel, but across the entire suite. We specifically designed the icon set, the colors, and everything so that when your end user gets the iPad, they get the watch, they get on their computer, that it's a consistent experience across the board. Okay, it needs to feel like this is one full suite that was intended to, to work together. Okay, all right, so that was point number one, look and feel. Point number two, reliable connectivity. LTE and Wi-Fi dual path give you some of the most reliable connectivity you can find in a security platform. Think about LTE for a second. Verizon spent $90 million last November to boost their advertising for LTE Advanced, okay? Chevy is putting them in every single car. You can't go anywhere. In fact, I almost hesitate to even bring this up because LTE is now table stakes, okay? It's now standard for everything. People are stopped marketing. In fact, when I was putting together this presentation a few months ago um, with our soft launch dealers, I was look, trying to find examples of LTE marketing and it was hard to find it because everyone stopped advertising because everybody has it now, okay? Not in our industry, of course. Right. It's kind of sad that people are still <laughs> offering security panels that are not LTE, okay? But that dual path connectivity, we're actually making it not just LTE, but it's, it's using Wi-Fi at the same time. So both of those pathways, the LTE and the Wi-Fi together are working to say, hey, I'm gonna send your signals. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, just think about it. <laughs> yes. So we thought of doing a meme. <laughs> About dual path, okay. Because when you, do, it's like a disco. Oh, okay. Got it. I always do this this dual path it's, thing, and you guys. We love just found the perfect one. Though. She actually made one. I did, but it just stayed in our little secret. Got it. Closet. So apparently, over in the marketing office, these guys are having fun. Sometimes it's at my expense, but that's okay. A yeah, lot no, of it's good, good. Yeah, so, <laughs> a lot of times. No, it's perfect though because yeah. you know. Well, dual, <laughs> and the way dual path works is it literally will <laughs> this way or that way. It will go either one, whichever one happens to be fastest. So if you've got Wi-Fi that's really fast right now, it's going to go Wi-Fi. If you've got LTE that's really fast, it's going to go LTE. Sometimes it'll go both ways. It's going to make sure that, that signal goes, and it's fast, you guys. It's really fast to be able to get that signal and say I'm going to do something from my phone and then have it go. Again, go to your local distributor, have them show you how fast it is. When I go to my phone and I say, disarm panel, it disarms almost instantly. I say, turn on a light, it turns on almost instantly. It really is truly fast, okay? The other great thing about dual path is that we can use it for software updates, uh, it improves your reliability, and it also gives you a lot of flexibility. So unlike before where you had to walk around the house, <laughs> you technicians, you know what I'm talking about, you're walking around, you're like, two bars, two bars, gotta find two bars. <laughs> Two bars over here, two bars over here, no, no, okay. I'm trying to desperately find two bars anywhere, and I can't, okay. Or, well, sir, it looks like I can only install your panel uh, at the bottom of your closet in your master bedroom because that's the only spot I can get a cellular signal, okay. Or I've got to run some gigantic, ridiculous cellular, you know, antenna. Your cell phone doesn't need an antenna, does it? No, but you I You don't have remember, to attach one in? I remember the first one. <laughs> Cell phones that were huge, mm -hmm. and they had so the whole oh thing gosh. was like yeah. a foot long uh -huh. or something, and it would sit in a cabinet under the sink. Really? Yes. Wow! <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh! And we were so excited to have one, but I don't remember using it. <laughs> you know, it's funny. People it's always say, way. you know, hey, how come? Where's the cellular antenna? How come you don't need an antenna? Do you have a way to extend the cellular antenna? And our answer is, you don't need one for your phone. Why do you need one for the panel? If we're using the same you technology. No, there's no spot for it. The antenna is actually built into. Well, I know that, but yeah. but no, <laughs> you're really looking at your phone for antenna. Mountain, like, <laughs> I don't know wow. what I'm looking for. <laughs> wow. Listen. Okay. I sometimes know the difference. I have always, I've actually always so wanted to do a video where we like stick a, like an antenna on here, and then like you <laughs> you're walking around and like smacking people oh in the gosh, road as you're talking with the antenna. <laughs> But now the antenna thing's kind of gone away. People are we still should do that. Like, we still probably should. We did that. You just wouldn't. Yeah, an, okay. that, was a, that was a good video. We'll that was a good video. We'll, you should dig that one up and share that with everyone. You just wouldn't. That's, that's a funny video. These guys will like watching it. Okay, so dual path. Any questions on dual path? Uh, no, but we've got some other random questions. Uh, let's see if they're applicable. Go ahead and throw Is it up. Is there a night mode? 
Is there a night mode? Ah, good question. So Mike wants to know if there's a night mode. On the panel, you can actually go in. So you saw how it goes into photo frame, right? Um, when it's not being used, it kind of uh, plays that photo frame screensaver. Um, well, on the panel, you can actually say, at a certain time each day, turn off and then turn back on again. So it turns the screen off and kind of goes into like a power saver mode. At my house, I do it for 1 o'clock a.m. Really? And then uh, wakes back up again at 6 a.m. In fact, I had a problem. Lola, um, our six-year-old, uh, a couple years ago, was having a hard time staying in bed. And so I actually told her, you can't get out of bed unless the panels lit back up. We just posted that video to Facebook. Oh. The example. I need to do that for my daughter. So, she is such a creep yeah. at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so you tell her, hey, don't get out of bed at 4. You, you can get out of bed as soon as the panel turns on. And she comes around. She, We would hear her door open because we put sensors on their doors, <laughs> on their bedroom doors. Uh -huh. And so I can hear Lola's bedroom door open. I'm like, oh, here we go. And she goes out, and I hear, and I'd look over because my I could see down the hallway from my bedroom. And I'd see her do this. <laughs> she's so And she's cute. looking to see if the panel's turned on and when it wasn't. She'd go back. I have, Lola's door oh, closed. And I'm going like, to do that. Z -wave lights. Yeah, the Z-Wave lights is a different one. Right. But yeah, so there's, there's, a, there's, there's a nice little feature that allows it to turn off. Now, there is a nighttime mode coming in a future software update, um, which we're working on that will actually turn off sounds and volume and everything like that you, if you wanted to. It it's, will be part of the software um, when we launch the remote. The IQ remote, uh, because if you want to put one Someone in your bedroom, you, you might want to say, "Hey, I want that to be quiet in my bedroom, so it doesn't." I do. Yes. Out, so. I do. Jared does yeah. the same thing. Yep. Um, yeah. What does LTE stand for? Quiz. Oh. Good question, Chelsea. What is it? No. Long term. Uh, it's, lo it's long term evolution. Long term evolution. All right. Good job. Long term evolution. Mm -hmm. LTE is the technology is specifically designed by Qualcomm, so that you wouldn't have to keep replacing the radios, and the radios can continue to be upgraded from 4G to 5G to 6G to 7G. So when Qualcomm designed it, and they're the ones who actually just designed the chipset mm -hmm. in our panel, um, they designed it specifically to continue to upgrade it. I think that they, they're they saying that it should be good until like 2030. I personally think that they're going to want a new panel long before that panel needs to be replaced. But just the comfort knowing that it'll work that long? 15 years. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And even if it true. doesn't, I mean, some of the people um, who are experienced in this, with our first generation panel, if you've installed our first generation panel and you're thinking, oh gosh, what happens when you know LTE is the standard and they no longer allow 3G communication oh, to go? Oh, asking. Yeah, the, the question is, what, what happens to that? Well, with dual path, it still works because it would still work over Wi-Fi. Oh. So even in the event that the LTE does go out of date, which it's not going to, you would still have the backup of the, of the Wi-Fi. And we've had several issues. In fact, there was Alarm.com gave us some really cool data um, I wish I had this, this slide to show you. They actually were watching during a hurricane, and they watched as panels literally turned off across the eastern seaboard. Wow. <laughs> because the cell towers were all going down. Uh -huh. But the hard lines with the Wi-Fi was still working. And so all of the IQ panels, all the Qualsys IQ panels that had dual path, were still working. No way. And so they were still signaling and still, still functioning. But they could actually literally see all their panels going down across the east, eastern That's seaboard, crazy. except for the IQ panels that were there because the Wi-Fi was still working. So I'm fine never seeing a hurricane live. Really? I'm fine with that. Uh -huh. I've always wanted to be Ooh. in a natural disaster. We were almost in a tornado in Hold Nebraska. On. Did you really just say that? Fine. You were in a tornado? Almost. Yeah. Like we could see they were like in the distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you guys been in a, in a natural disaster? We want to hear about it. Tell us. Hold on. The creek behind my house used to blow a lot. The creek, the creek <laughs> behind your house used to flood a lot. <laughs> it would never okay. hit the property, but okay, yeah. hold on, more questions. Close. Oh, okay. How do you explain the difference between LTE and 3G, 4G to a customer? Really good question. question. Really good question. We have lots of questions. Um, okay. Good. So di <laughs> how do you explain the difference between 3G and LTE to a customer? I would say the first thing you want to explain is look at your phone. You know your phone? You know how you've got LTE on your phone and you have them pull up and you, sh you show them the LTE? Say that's the latest and greatest cellular technology. That's the one that's going to continue working. 3G is a slower technology. Okay, It doesn't go as fast. And it's an older technology that Verizon and AT&T or whoever your provider is, is actually phasing out because it takes different towers and different radios and things like that. So they're slowly phasing that out. Um, the last note I got from Verizon was that as of July of 2018, they will no longer allow any new L. LTE activations. I don't know if L if, if ATD, activations? sorry, L any oh. new 3G activations. Okay. 
So everything has to be on LTE by next Wait, July. Next, next. Yes. It's like in a year. It's a year. Oh. In one year, if it's not, they will not. Now, that doesn't mean that they'll completely turn off any 3G stuff now. They're going to continue maintaining it for a while, but it's just the same as anything else. If you've got an old car that you're not going to drive anymore, are you really going to continue doing all the old oil, all the oil changes and maintenance and things like that if you're never going to drive it and never going to use it? It's the same thing here. Verizon and AT&T, they're not motivated to upkeep their old technology just because there's a few people who don't want to switch out to the new stuff. So part of that effort to tell your customers to say, hey, it's time to move to the right technology that's going to take you through the next 10 years plus. So hopefully that helps. Other you questions? You mentioned the remote, and now we have six questions about when we might be getting that. IQ remote. Is um, the secondary, let's clarify, because we have some yep. questions on that. So the IQ remote is the secondary tablet for the IQ panel 2. Uh, it is currently in soft launch, which basically means that we have selected dealers that we've handpicked from our, um, from our various uh, dealer community, and we are allowing them to install it in specific locations, and we're watching very carefully. The biggest thing we want to do is the hardware is softened. Uh, the, the sorry, sorry, the software is hardened, and uh, we believe that everything is right and ready. But we want to test it in a variety of situations: uh, home Wi-Fi's, using the built panels, built-in router, etc., to make sure that when we roll it out officially, that it works flawlessly for you. So that's what we're in the process of doing right now. Um, I don't have a date because we don't know how long that process will take. It could be, you know, a few weeks. It could be a few months. Uh, it really depends on how long it takes. We're also planning on testing a number of, and currently are testing a number of Wi-Fi repeaters so that we can say, hey, we recommend if you need a Wi-Fi repeater, here's the two or three or whatever Wi-Fi repeaters we recommend. Here's the routers that we recommend based on whether or not they're going to perform the right way. So good Same. questions. Well, okay. let's see. Any other LTE or dual path questions? LTE is 10 times faster than oh, 3G. Oh, Sebastian, thank you for that. LTE is 10 times faster than 3G, okay? So, and you'll see that when you compare the speed on your panel when you actually send a command and receive a command, it's really fast, really fast. I mean, again, like we said, almost mm -hmm. instantaneous. Right. Okay? Well, let's keep going. I'm sure there's lots of other questions. We'll keep, we'll keep getting to them. Do you want the just one video? Or no, you, I'll send the link. Yeah, you just send them the link. Okay, so encryption, that's number two, okay? Encryption isn't necessarily a problem right now. Oh, hold on. The tans are coming through. Okay. Everybody say hi. <laughs> Only a couple. Yeah. Mark is so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all you do. <laughs> they put up with a lot. <laughs> that was our technical account management team. Off to go grab a little lunch. Um, so encryption hasn't been a big deal yet. Okay. If you look at the news articles that are out there, you could just Google hacking. Um, security system hacking or things like that, you'll find a bunch. Most of the time, it's a company like Forbes or Wired or, or ABC News or things like that who says, we want to write an article about security system being hacked, and they pay an analyst or a hacker to prove that it can be done. Okay? I have not received any news that actual hacks have occurred and actual burg burglaries. It's possible it has. It's possible they wouldn't even know if it did. I want to explain how and why this works so you guys understand it. The first type of hack is called a replay attack. Okay, a replay attack is essentially where they take a small device, I'm gonna pretend that this little box is my small device, and it's usually about this, it's called a listening device, um, and they take this device and then they toss it like down in your bushes or something. Okay, so those are my trees over there, and I'm gonna pretend that Kelsey's coming and going, okay? So Kelsey's coming, coming like and going, like and she's going. got her key fob, and as she leaves for the day, she presses. There's Kevin. Oh, there's Kevin with a boy. <laughs> They're gonna walk through. We have to clap. Hey, we might as well. So as Kelsey leaves to go to work for the day, she goes and she presses the the arming button. Or sorry, the yes, the arming the button arming. on her key on her key remote. Right. Now that sends a wireless signal from her key fob to the panel to arm the system, and it does right. Well, when she comes home again, she uses that same key fob to disarm. The whole <laughs> time she's doing that, that little listening device we tossed in the in the in the corner, that's recording. And it recorded this signal when she armed. It recorded the signal when she disarmed. It recorded the signal when she walked out the door. Okay. Every signal to and from that panel is being recorded. Now, if that system is, is using unencrypted sensors, the signals are being sent through the air and can potentially be, um, can potentially be taken and recorded and copied. So the, what the hacker does is he takes this little listening device, plugs it up to his computer, 
And then he says, replay disarm command. So now when Kelsey goes to work, he presses replay disarm command. The panel disarms, and he goes in Kelsey's house and does whatever he wants. Takes everything. What would he take? What, what would you miss most if someone broke in your house? Um, that's a hard one. My computer. Your computer's here. Because well, you're probably going to work with it. Okay, then my TV. Or my husband. <laughs> Just I don't know of many hackers that <laughs> hack a system and then steal a husband. And why is your husband at home? Why is well, he I'm senseless? <laughs> no, he gets home before me. He does? Okay. Yeah. What about you, Whip? What would you miss most? I say dogs. Are you going to hit me? No? You would miss your dogs the most? I don't know. I, d I don't. If you came no. home and you found out your dogs were missing. I would be pretty heartbroken, but then we would probably quickly be going to the town and rescuing more. And rescuing more. more. You're like, eh, well, let's just get a refill. Oh, maybe oh this gosh. time, you know, there'll be better potty drink or something. I yeah, mean, you maybe. don't, you can upgrade. Well, that won't happen with either one of you because you have encrypted sensors on your systems. Okay? So the way it works is that when you pair in the IQ uh, Mini S or any of our S line sensors, it will actually. Uh, there's an encryption protocol that occurs between the panel and the sensor. So when it's sending that door open signal, okay, so if I had one of those on this door right here, when it sends that door open signal, it scrambles it a certain way and requires a certain token between the sensor and the panel to occur. Otherwise, it won't allow it. So if I record it with my little listening device and then play it, it wouldn't play the right the right thing because it doesn't have the right in the right encrypted code. Okay, so that's a, that's really op oversimplification. The point here is that hacking is real. It's not a problem now, but it will be a problem in the future. And if you don't start installing encrypted sensors now, then later on, when it does become a problem, your customers are going to say, "Well, I need you to replace everything." Okay, and you don't want to be in that position. Okay, the second one that we want to mention is, and this is particularly, um, we, we we had a. a a hacker go through and analyze um, several different systems. One, the Honeywell one, came up um, with four critical vulnerabilities: six severe and two medium. Basically, this was where um, they had encrypted the front side of things, but they didn't encrypt the network. And so, a network hack is basically where they will go in through your Wi-Fi network, and any hacker will tell you that it's easy as pie to, to hack a Wi-Fi network. Uh, they'll go in, and once they log into your, your Wi-Fi network, then they can use that as a free backdoor to get into your security system, and they can take down the system, create unauthorized codes. You can see here um, Tripwire, Forbes, Threat Post. There's a bunch of articles on there. So, again, you can go and, and research this yourself, but you've got to have both front-end sensor and, and back-end um, encryption. So we do a lot to put security back into security. The first thing we do is we use a security-enhanced version of Android. Um, it's actually technically SE Linux is, is what we're calling it, but it's a security enhanced version of the actual operating system. It includes a built-in firewall. We're using cloud token authentication, which means any signals coming to or from the cloud will automatically be protected. So it's almost like having a bouncer at the door saying, hey, you want to get in here? Nope, sorry, you can't come in because you don't have the right passcode. Okay? All of those signals, whether it's from the cloud or from the, uh, from the sensors, are protected. Okay? We've got a secure connection to alarm.com. We're using encrypted sensors. Of course, because that is um, what we just talked about, and, and that's going to be critical for all your communications inside the home. Visual verification, because the panel has a panel camera, you actually now see who's coming and going. So it allows you to kind of control that yourself even. Uh, we're using our lifestyle devices. We're using uh, Z-Wave Plus, so that's encrypted as well. Uh, so we're protecting those signals. And then Bluetooth disarming, which is encrypted. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. Before we dive into our next subject, is there any questions about encryption? No. Oh. You did a great job explaining it. Well, thank you. <laughs> They're all very concerned about Kelsey's husband. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of worried about him. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> <kidding. laughs> so think of it this way. This is a great way to describe it to your customer. If security is a protective barrier for your home, then the encryption is like a protective barrier for your security system. Okay. When we install these encrypted sensors for you, it's going to protect all those signals. And we've got a full lineup of encrypted devices that we're going to install for you today, ma'am or sir, uh, to make sure that your system is safe. Okay. Now, look at the actual sensor itself. You can see on the left side here, this is the Honeywell 6 sensor. That's an encrypted sensor, but it's really big, really big. Um, I personally think sensors need to be a little bit smaller. Uh, if you look at the, you know, already. Here's ours. Yeah, look how small that is. If you haven't seen one of these already. Is it an inch? Uh, I think it's an inch wide and two inches long. 
and a half an inch oh, thick. And then it has the gap. Oh, these are teeth. Yeah, so that's, yeah, we taped them for a photo shoot we were doing. Oh. Um, but it's got a rare earth magnet for an expanded gap, so you can actually put it up as far as an inch away. Um, it's got a, a, a raised antenna inside, and we use dual batteries. Yeah, go ahead and crack it open and show it to them. Okay, so we got dual batteries. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So you got a raised antenna there. You got dual batteries uh, for eight. That's generally eight to ten year battery life. So, really? Yeah. Um, at least that's what our engineers are telling us. Now that's awesome. we haven't been installing Listen. these sensors for eight to ten years, so we don't know for <laughs> Mine sure. Mine's been installed but... for two years and it's been great. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's at least two years then. Um, you can see the Vivint sensor on the right. Uh, that's their non-encrypted sensor, and it's even still a little bit thicker and a little bit taller. So we think looks matter. Again, we all agreed earlier that looks matter, and that includes not just uh, the panel, but the sensors as well. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Bluetooth touchless disarming. By far my favorite feature of the IQ Panel 2. Me too. Um, really cool, really cool. The concept here is you leave your phone in your pocket and the system disarms itself like magic, okay? So imagine as you come home, your regular routine of maybe fumbling for your keys to find your key fob or pulling out your phone and doing this or even just going in and touching your you know, Yale lock or a quick set lock to disarm the code and then walking in and disarming your panel you know, whatever that thing is. Now imagine replacing that with simply keeping the phone in your pocket and just walking the door. Listen, coming home from the grocery store, holding a baby and a three-year-old and a husband, because sometimes I, they need help. I know. Your husband. Sometimes. <laughs> you hold his hand and, try, and then fighting with two dogs when you're walking in through the door, because they're thrilled to see me. They really like me. It's hard to remember to turn off the system. Yep, and by then it's screaming at you or things like that. Oh, and, you, and, and it, and it loud, completely so distracts loud, you, right? It's just that it's that feeling of like when I come home, I want to pay attention to my get coming home routine, not be typing in codes into panels. And it's not that it's a bad thing. Well, I still want my kids to do it because I want the disarmed photos, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But it's the ability to just make things easy. For me, I was nervous to arm my system, though, because I didn't want it to go off, so I wouldn't arm it. And then when Bluetooth came out, and my husband connected it because I didn't do it, um, it made <laughs> our husbands seriously. <laughs> we love That's why we don't want them to get taken. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'll use it. Same thing with the uh, door lock on the front mm -hmm. door. That it's it got so, me to use this panel more. is so easy to use. Even her husband can do it. <laughs> He's gonna watch out. That's important to note. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. serious. <laughs> All right. It's no, enough. but it made me go from being nervous to use it yeah. to being confident about and, it. And that's the feedback we're getting from our, our customers, too, is that... Well, and then when you go up to the screen and you, you're unsure, I, I get really nervous and I start second-guessing what buttons to push because, you know, obviously the mm -hmm. one that says disarm isn't clear enough for someone like <laughs> me. But I don't have to touch the system in order to use it. I, I like it. Yeah, well, she's That's using perfect. it more by using it less, right? Because you find yourself, so my wife actually finds herself using it all the time. She she didn't arm her system religiously. I was the one who usually armed it. See? Now she's arming it. But it's because she doesn't want to have to deal with the disarming when she comes in. She actually will disarm, she'll arm it first because she wants to come home and have all the automation. We created a bunch of automation rules that say, oh, when you disarm system, also unlock the front door, turn on the thermostat, turn on the porch light, things like that. So now when she comes home, she literally just walks up. In fact, I want to show a video of this. I got a quick little video I want to show. Where I need to set up more automation with my design. That's my trash can. Do you have a picture of your trash can? Uh, where is it? Aaron. All right. This is my wife coming home. Watch this. I love Aaron. Bluetooth disarm. So, so cool. Real simple, and I, I don't know if it's stuttered or things like that, but she starts just getting out of the car. Next thing you know, the panel is disarming because she got close enough. And for our house, it's just about right there. That's about the distance you got to be from the from the front porch. Okay. So when she comes home, she's literally walking up to the house. The panel disarms. Then the front door unlocks. All she does is just walk inside. Okay. Unlocks automatically right before she gets up to the door. 
Okay, and we actually hear it. It's really cool to be able to just hear that panel disarming. Um, we have a question. Just as we get up, yeah. Does please. your phone give you any indication it was just disarmed via Bluetooth without opening the alarm.com app? It will if you create a, a notification for it. So you can create a, a notification in alarm.com that says when panel disarmed, send me a text message, um, and that'll let you know. And the cool thing about when it's disarming, it's a secure encrypted connection. So it's it's a very very secure handshake between your pen, the, your phone and the panel, and the panel will even say system disarmed by Jeremy's iPhone or system disarmed by Whitney's iPhone, you know whatever it is. So it it'll whatever you've named your phone, that's what it'll speak when it disarms. So good question. Does the panel need to be repaired with the device if you turn Bluetooth off on your phone? No, no, no it so. retains that. So turning Bluetooth off on your phone, and then once the panel. Um, once you turn it back on, it will automatically just reconnect, and the panel remembers that connection, as does your phone. So the only time it would is if you went into the panel and deleted the device, your phone, from the panel, or deleted it from your forgot phone, device. then you'd have to, yeah, if you forgot device on either one, then you'd have to repair it, okay? You can do up to five phones over Bluetooth. Um, you can, no um, and they have to be phones, no tablets. Mm -hmm. And the reason we did that is because often you're leaving your tablet at home and you don't, you didn't want that system to disarm automatically. You can also choose what uh, time limit to use. So there's been multiple times where, you know, I'm going out to the car and then I've got to go back and get something. And, and as I'm going back and forth, maybe getting stuff from the garage or things like that, uh, maybe doing something else in the yard before we go, buckling in kids. I don't want that to disarm before I had a chance to actually finish leaving, if that makes sense. So default right now is 10 minutes. You can change that to be less or more. Uh, just go inside settings and, and make that adjustment. So other questions about Bluetooth? Yes. What about dress scenarios or if you lose your phone or it's stolen? Great question. So in a, in a situation where you've lost your phone or you're stolen, first off, how long would it take you to know that your phone was gone? If your phone was literally, if your phone disappeared? Probably a negative amount of seconds. A negative amount of seconds. How about you? <laughs> yeah, instantly. You would, you yeah. would probably know. Within five like, minutes. Because we're checking yeah. it all the time. So to know that your phone was gone, they would have to, A, they'd have to know that it, your, that it was your phone. They'd have to know where you lived. They'd have to know that you had a security system that had Bluetooth that's just disarming in order to take advantage of all of that. So in terms of stealing someone's phone to use it to get inside their house, I wouldn't be worried about that. Okay? Now, I will tell you, that if it does happen, you simply go into alarm.com, click on the mobile tab, okay? Once you're logged in, click on the mobile tab, and then you simply deactivate the Bluetooth disarming for that uh, particular one. Now, you could forget that device and delete it completely. You could also do it from your, you know, from your, if you're on an iPhone, you can go to, you know, iCloud.com and, and find your phone and, and remotely wipe your phone, things like that. So there's some, there's some protocols in place, excuse me. <coughs> That, that will uh, that will kind of protect you in that regard. Okay. Other questions. Uh, what if you leave and your family's at home, but Bluetooth disarming only works for arm away, not arm stay. So if your family's at home, you'd probably arm stay in that scenario, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, it's only for arm face. away. You like so if you're sleeping at night, you know. I can't see you. Just get some water. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> How does it know if your family is still at home? It would be based on how you arm the system. If your family is at home, you are not going to arm it away. Well, that, and that's where geofencing comes into play. So, and, well, and maybe he's asking, you have to actually arm it in order for Bluetooth disarming. Yeah, it's, there's not, it's not Bluetooth arming. Question. So that's where geofencing comes into play. So I created a rule that says when my phone or my wife's phone leaves the geofence, <coughs> and they both have to leave the geofence, then remind me to arm. And if I don't arm, then... I get that text message. If I don't, don't arm, then I'm not going to get that automation. That, that's where my wife's actually using our system more is because when she leaves, she gets the text message and reminds her, oh, I need to arm the system. And if I don't arm the system, I'm going to have to type in the code into the panel and into the you know, lock. I don't want to deal with that with carrying she's kids. She's thinking of all the work. Yeah, she's thinking of all the work. And so she says, oh, I'm going to arm my system. I remember to arm it. How a brand new feature comes in and is like, well, now, now it just needs like so much work. Yeah. On a normal system to type in yeah. the code. It, it feels like a lot, and, and she doesn't want to do that work, and so therefore she says, I'm going to remember to arm my system every time. I'm with her. So, and it's more, you know, that, that geofencing is a mile radius around your house, so that's a great reminder. If you're just running across the street, maybe you're getting the mail, going for a quick jog around the block or things like that, it's not going to remind you to, to arm your system. You'll have to do that manually. But when you get outside that, that's when you decide, 
do I want to arm? Are there people still at home? Are my kids still there? Things like that. And if they're not, and you know that they're gone, that's when you'd say arm away, mm -hmm. and then voila, and the Bluetooth do, is now looking. And can... anytime it's armed away, the panel is just looking for your Bluetooth device, just looking around for it. As soon as it sees it, it connects quickly, disarms the system, and then disconnects. And so it doesn't stay connected. So if you have a headphones or anything, it's not going to interrupt the connection. Mm -mm. Nope, not at all. Okay. Um, <coughs> question related to encryption. Um, let's finish. Okay. Oh, let's finish Bluetooth. And we'll go back. So you can add smart rules, lights, locks, thermostats, whatever you want. You say when system disarmed, do this. You know, turn on the light, unlock the door, adjust my thermostat, whatever you like. It's it's completely up to you. Okay. Um, <coughs> and you can just leave your phone in your purse. All right. So you have a question about encryption. Yes. Um, if using a falsest translator takeover module, is there any encryption when taking over other manufacturers' contacts? No, uh, not for wireless. Uh, great question. Our hardwired, the hardwire 16, we have a new version called the IQ Hardwire 16S. And if you're doing a hardwire takeover um, or a new build, like new construction, then that will encrypt the wireless signals from the hardwire 16 to the panel. Uh, but the other ones are actually um, are not encrypted. The wireless ones are not encrypted. So good question. Very good question. Okay, but we are working on something in the future for that, but we just don't have anything currently. All right, so let's talk about, so you, we've talked about a bunch of things. Okay, first one was look and feel. Second one was? Encryption. Encryption. Third one was? Touchless. Bluetooth touchless disarming. I feel like we're missing one in there. Visual. Look, did you have? LT and Wi-Fi dual oh, path. yes, that was, that was me. Available. I messed it up. I'm sorry. Okay. Was it was the second one. Okay, oh, and, then, the, and then the I last thought, one's visual, okay? Disarm photos from the five megapixel panel camera. Okay, every single system. Well, that's a great looking person, don't oh, you think? Cute. Well, yeah. <laughs> My hair is a different color. Um, every single system includes a five megapixel panel camera. Okay, that system captures those disarm photos and sends them to your watch, sends them to, keeps them on the panel, sends them to your phone, uh, saves them on your computer, pushes them out to the cloud, and uh, with our new latest uh, software, which just came out when we launched the IQ Panel 2, it also will do alarm videos. So in the event that the alarm goes off, it'll actually record alarm videos. So that panel camera is really, 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 really powerful. And it gives you that visual verification, that confirmation of who is there, when they got there, um, allows you to see if they brought a friend with them, you know, I, you can have control. In fact, I'm going to show you guys <laughs> so a awesome. disarm photo that I got Steven this morning. Didn't know. Oh, no. <laughs> Steven did not know. Oh, no. Steven did know I did this. So I was like, let's see if you your pictures. you got to tell them. I know. My so. husband didn't know of this feature, so we went <laughs> this weekend, and I was like, Steven, look at all of your disarm pictures. He's it was like, oh, really boy. funny. Uh-huh. we got to go. So one. I get my disarm photos every morning. Here's Whitney this morning. <laughs> look at that face. I, like, I don't remember what I did. <laughs> It's pretty entertaining. Hold on, let me see. You can't be showing me. These are for you. I know. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. Is that one that Blake Every once in a while, I can't tell if she's angry or if she's <laughs> yawning on this one. What do you guys think? I was Is that yawning. anger? Is I she, was is yawning. She yelling? Is she upset? Is that a awesome. yawn? Only you guys can decide. Should I, I need to remember There's for Halloween really, this year. Really awful ones in here. That's I love it. I love it. This one is probably one of my favorites. It's a look of utter disgust. <laughs> she clearly is not happy to be at work today. <laughs> but I love being able to see. And I can know. So, Whitney, what time are you supposed to be at work? Uh -huh. Eight. Eight o'clock? Okay. I'm bad at being the work at eight. Eight o'six. Well, eight, eight fifteen. Eight, 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 eight twenty-seven. Eight twenty-seven. Eight o eight. Seven fifty-nine. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Eight twelve. <laughs> um. Seven fifty-four. So. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, you get the point. It's, it, you didn't it, like that one? <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one. I had a box in yeah. my face. So, guys, the great thing about this is I know when she's coming. I know when she's going. It's, it, it's that kind of connectivity. I'm connected to the office whether I'm there or not. This Same is thing telling with your house. me I need to be on time. No, she's fine. She does a great job. <laughs> so the ability to see these disarmed photos. Now, I personally, the way I use it is I use Bluetooth disarming for myself and my wife, and then on my kids – do not, even though my son has an iPhone, um, my, my kids, I don't do Bluetooth disarming with because I want that disarm photo. I want to be able to see. He's got a girlfriend. <laughs> yes, I would like to know that. I would like to see who he's coming home with. I'd like to see when he's coming home, things like that, and be able to Awkward. see his face. And that he's in. Now, he is 
just tall enough that the disarm photo is like this. <laughs> it's cute. Yeah. It's just it's just the eyes. And Mine like the top has of the that head. really bad angle where it's on the table. Mine too. Uh -huh. <laughs> when you look at it, it's yeah. bad. Because there are so many things that we didn't talk about today. Um, the built-in video tutorials, uh, the built-in glass break detector, the built-in router. You know, there's so many different things with the IQ panel too that are really going to make it the most amazing platform you've ever installed. But again, let's keep it simple, okay? Looks matter. Encrypted connectivity with S-Line sensors, touchless connectivity with Bluetooth touchless disarming, visual connectivity with those disarm photos, and a reliable connectivity with LTE and Wi-Fi dual path connectivity. Um, it really is the best panel you can install. Now I've got a question for you guys. Little poll question. Um, what is the most exciting part of the IQ panel 2? I'm curious to know. After you talked about it, is it the look after we talked about it today, is it the look and feel? Is it the Wi-Fi uh, and LTE dual path? Is it the S-line encrypted sensor technology? Is it the Bluetooth touchless disarming? Or is it those disarm photos and alarm videos from the five megapixel panel camera? Okay, very curious. Now, and you can, and I think you can choose all that apply. Maybe you can't. Maybe I did that poll wrong. You know what? I bet I did it wrong. Because I think I. <clears throat> oh, I did it. I did it as one answer. Hold on. Save it. All right, so it looks like you only were able to, to vote once. I did that poll wrong. So unfortunately, the first thing you touched is uh, I'm going to see if it, um, I'm going to do it again. Here, here you go. I just fixed it. Now try it. Now you can choose all that apply, OK? Choose the ones that you think are most interesting. The reason we want to know this is because it's going to help us when, we talk, when we're talking about marketing. Um, what are the things that? You know, we should really emphasize what are the things that you need more resources on and things like that. Now, we don't have a lot of time left, but I do want to spend a little bit of time on the dealer portal and show you guys some of the resources that are available to you to, um, to, to leverage in your sales situations. Um, so we'll let that poll finish up. Any, any other questions or things that have popped up while we're waiting for people to finish the poll? A lot of people have been asking how they can get swag. What's swag? Call says swag. What's swag? Shirts and pins. But what's, and cups. Where's that word swag? swag? What is swag? That is like swag. <laughs> I'm glad you don't own the video. Yeah, already. I don't have the camera. You guys should have seen the strut she just did. Okay. My dad broke his leg. Like, you know what swag is? No, he has. S W A G stuff we all get. Stuff we seriously? That's what it is. Oh, I had no idea. Really? No. No, I would have never. Yeah. No. Stuff we all. That's what did you guys about. know that? I didn't know that. Yeah. Everybody stuff knows. we all want. Stuff we all want. Interesting. That would be swall. That would be swall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and close this poll out. Um, so, uh, yeah. Great uh, great point on Qualsa swag. So here's here's your mission then. If you want some great swag, in fact, um, go, go grab some examples of stuff that they, they could win from us. Okay. We're willing to give you cool stuff in exchange for Something. some great testimonials. Okay. We want to hear... Comments from your customers. We want to hear comments from you and your technicians. Okay, as you guys start installing this and have the experiences with it, you know, let us know what they are. Why is it your customer liked it? Why is it that you like it? Why is it your technicians uh, think it's the most easiest you know system to install ever? Okay, if you can send us some great things to marketing at qualsys.com. So type that in and send that to everybody. Um, we'll give you your choice. Okay. Don't do that because that's not that's ever going to happen. That's a fake one. That was a, that was a was demo. A so we've got Qualsys flag t-shirts. Okay. Hold we've on, got yeah. another. Hold on. Let me yep. We've got our again. made security great t-shirts. Look at this one. So this is a, a green t-shirt and it says made security great again at the bottom of it. Okay. It's still got that flag design. We've got this same shirt in gray. Uh, we also have these little. Um, what do you call these things? Card holders? Yeah. They go on the back phone. of your they go on the back of your phone. So you can hold I hold three different cards. I hold my my phone or sorry, my ID and then my uh, two oh, credit cards. Thank my debit you. card, I my didn't credit know. card. We didn't have okay. any more in there. Uh we've also got hats. Okay. Um so if you guys want to earn some cool stuff, um, we need you to write up your experiences and tell it to us, okay? 
if we think it's good enough, then we'll send you we'll send you a hat or a t-shirt. What or about like sharing that. on social media too? So tagging us. Great idea. We'd love to share those. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'd love to use those things you send mm -hmm. us on social media, but we also want you to join us on social media. So we've got youtube.com slash qualsys. You can go to facebook.com slash qualsys, um, instagram.com slash qualsys, or just search for qualsys on Instagram. Twitter. Uh, Twitter. Uh, and on Twitter, it's <laughs> qualsys inc. Qualsys inc. Um, so I think there is a qualsys one on there, but we... I, when we first established that, we could never remember what the password is. So we could never get back into it. Oh, no. I know. It's I had silly. nothing to do with that. You were looking no, at me it, like, it, was, it, it predated me, too, actually. <laughs> Someone had gotten it before I got a hold of the, of the marketing. So, um, uh, and then uh, what else do we got? Are we on anything else? Oh, uh, LinkedIn. Oh, um, yes. Look for, look for calls we'll be LinkedIn. adding videos to Vimeo. Okay. So, that will be coming. Okay. So a lot of great stuff, mm -hmm. you know, join us on social media, join us, you know, send us things up through email. That's how you're going to earn some of this cool stuff, some of this swag or swow, as, as the case may be. Um, okay. Someone said it was squirrel, squirrel with a gun. Squirrel with a gun. <laughs> That's I really think it was creative. Mike. Yeah. Okay, Mike, we do have Mike, a question birthday, Mike? coming through. Happy okay. birthday, Mike. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, Other questions? Router. Can you talk about the router? Yes. Okay, so the IQ Panel 2 has a built-in router. Okay, that built-in router allows you to create a private network for all of the Wi-Fi based devices, cameras, doorbell cameras, uh, IQ remote, things like that. Okay, technically it's on and active and working right now. Um, I know that I myself have used it a little bit and um, I, it's, it's been hit and miss in terms of its uh, reliability. We're, that's part of what we're working on right now with um, the IQ remote launch. So you can use it. If you find some great things uh, to use it for, then absolutely do it um, and try it out. Uh, it's inside your devices. You'll see that it's, I think it's called the Qualsys Access Point. So for your technicians who are, are trying it out. I personally would say if you want to try and avoid some truck rolls and, and, and phone calls, not to do it yet. Uh, just because we're still trying to refine and make sure that that whole process um, is flawless between the panel and the, and the other devices. So. Um, really look for that as we launch the IQ remote uh, here in the future. So, good question. Does it work with Nest? Does the IQ Panel 2 work with Nest? Yes, it does. Um, because the Nest thermostat is really not connected at all to the IQ Panel. It's connected to Alarm.com. And because you can use Alarm.com in this panel, then yes, it would work. So, uh, if they already have a Nest thermostat, then you certainly can put that on Alarm.com and, and get it going. So, yeah. I think there's some limitations there, though, because the IQ panel um, doesn't have, I mean, you wouldn't have the, the Nest UI or you wouldn't have any thermostat UI on the panel. So I personally would, would prefer the IQ, or sorry, the alarm.com thermostat instead. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Next week's webinar. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's you. So we had such a resounding um, applause from the technical webinar that Jeremy Blakeney did for us, uh, was it last two weeks ago? Um, that many people were emailing and saying, I want to do it again, I want more people to be on it, things like that. So we have a technical webinar next week uh, that our TAM team will put on. You saw them all headed to lunch. They'll hopefully be back before next week so that they can do that <laughs> webinar for you. You never um, know. You never really know. Uh, but yes, please join in, register for that. Uh, watch your email. So look on your, on your thing. You should see the link on there, and you can register for that right away. Um, and that's a lot of really good – it's about a two-hour – thing that's a lot of really good deep dive information about how to program and you the panel. Can ask all of your questions. So start thinking of them now so that you yep. can That's that's where your technicians can really <laughs> dive in and, and learn everything. And they'll learn everything from how to program the panel locally to also during doing it through AirFX um, on, on alarm.com. So uh, dealer question. portal, check out the dealer portal. Oh, I'll yeah. send a link to that too to I'm gonna register. Pull that up real quick. Um, it's amazing. In case you're wondering, I think several people actually probably texted in right now and asked, "Is it amazing?" So I'm glad you pointed that out. Well, yeah. okay. So here <laughs> is our dealer portal. Okay, uh, you can see right here. There's this is kind of a bloggy type um, atmosphere for people to you know stay in contact. So every time you log into the dealer portal, you see what's happening like locally uh, with us. You can also look at our training. So we got sales training. This training that we're doing right now will appear on the sales training um, as soon as we finish. Uh, processing the recording, we'll get it right uploaded on there, and then we'll put it on there. You can also look at technical training, and then look at our uh, various events. If I go into sales training, I can actually see videos about um, Bluetooth disarming and the various features we have. 
Um, you can watch all these great little videos. Most of them are right around 30 seconds to 60 seconds long. They're good enough that you can show your customer um, how these features work. So it's a really great sales tool, okay, in addition to being a, a good tool for you. If you go into sales and marketing downloads, um, you'll have a lot of things, flyers, slicks, uh, panel emulators, commercials, uh, even if uh, website assets, if you've got a web team that you're going to rebrand your website, uh, a lot of great stuff in there. We're always adding to it too. I'm looking to add some stuff actually, hopefully this week. Yeah. If I can get your approval. <laughs> I'm probably busy, sorry. Uh, well, um, at least we know where the holdup is. <laughs> yeah. So on the support section, you can go through here and, and type in uh, any topic and pull up you know, our knowledge base and be able to use that for support. Uh, there's also our technical service bulletins you can find on there. If you want to find a distributor near you to buy <coughs> the IQ Panel 2, go on here and you can scroll down and look at all the distributors. <coughs> Excuse me. Or you can simply type in your address and um, find in. So I'm going to do um, 95126, which is where our corporate office is. We'll do it within 100 miles and click Find Locations. And it'll pull up all the distributors right there so I can see. You know, there's Triad, there's, you know, CES, things like that. Um, and then there's your marketing store as well. So if you wanted to buy swag, swa swow, whatever you want to call it. Squirrel up um, again. Or if you wanted to get, you know, flyers, display boards, things like that. Um, that's all in here that you would be able to get. So great questions. And, uh, and it's a great little tool. Um, I would point you specifically in the sales and marketing download section to the emulator. If you go to the panel emulator, um, either on your the smartphone version, the tablet version, or the computer version, this is a great way to actually show off the panel's u user interface. Um, we'll wait for a second while this loads in, uh, but you can actually see uh, how it swipes, how it works. If you do this on your phone, you can actually swipe with your phone. Uh, here finger. on a computer, swipe we put with some. Your finger. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. Swipe with your phone, like that. Um, That's why you keep me around. Yeah. So, you know, on here, I can, I can uh, swipe this way. I can scroll up and down, you know. Uh, it, it emulates the panel experience pretty well. Super so it's nice. a, great, a great little way to show it off uh, if you're not going to show them a real panel in real life. So. Okay, I think Any we're other questions? some questions. Join that technical webinar. I know you guys have had a lot of technical questions. They'll be the best people to answer those for Absolutely. you. There's Absolutely. also tech assets on the dealer portal as well, compatible devices list, and people are asking about thermostats and things like that. That's where you're going to want to find that stuff. Yeah. Um, if you scroll down to the very bottom of the dealer portal, you'll see compatible Z-Wave devices, compatible security sensors. Mm -hmm. You can see all that stuff. If you don't have a, a login to our dealer portal, go to dealers.qualsys.com. Type that one in for everyone. Dealers.calls.com and click register. You already gave it to him? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> so now you can register for that access. And then once uh, uh, Whitney and Kelsey get back to their desks, they'll go look through those and get yep. you guys approved. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, we're going to keep doing these. Uh, so watch for you know that technical one next week, and then we'll do another one after this. Um, we'll dive in a little bit deeper to some of these features, and, and, uh, and, and we've got some really fun ones. Can I share some of the webinar ideas I've got with you guys? Tell me if you guys think these would be good. Me? Yeah, the, you guys don't know about these. So, overcoming objections using demos. Oh, I had that one. Okay. Well, that's something similar. Okay. Using alarm.com usage reports to create upgrade campaigns. I didn't have that one, but that one's great. Picking, picking the right initial configuration for your customer. Using Amazon Alexa and Google uh, with IQ Panel 2. People will love that. Uh huh. Telling stories with Skybell. Um, <laughs> There's a little girl that keeps ditchy, doorbell ditching me on my sky bell. Oh yeah? And oh, you catch yeah. her every time. You know who it is. Take that video over to her house and show her mom. <laughs> Listen. Like, hey, Knock it this off. has got to stop. <laughs> the thing that sucks is it's always right when I'm putting my son to bed. Always. Uh, and then yeah. my dogs bark, and then I want to new with dogs because they keep barking. Anyway, it's just this wretched story cycle. Sounds awful. <laughs> like Are you okay? Really hard. Hey, it's gonna be okay. Do you promise? <laughs> Guys, thanks again not? for joining us. Thanks again. We're excited to have you, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk very soon. Thanks again.